What's up, everyone? Welcome to a brand new Sweet Film Podcast. My name is Zach. And my name is Cody. And today we got a very special show for you guys today. Today we're talking about, imagine if the Oscars were tomorrow. The nominations are already out, but tomorrow is the Oscars, and every film that's come out so far was eligible for nominations. Me and Cody want to discuss which films we think should be nominated for Best Picture. As of right now, we're not going into Bohemian Rhapsody, First Man. We haven't seen those yet, but any film that me and him have seen, we've compiled a list of our own 10 Best Picture nominations. Best Actor, Best Actress, Supporting Actor, Supporting Actress, Director, Screenplay, and Cinematographer. Those are the ones that we're going to be talking about. Those are the only categories we're going to be talking about. We know there's a ton of other ones, but if we did animation, obviously Incredibles 2 would be like the only one because there's not really that much animation out this year. And so, yeah, so this will be fun. And just so everyone knows, this is going to be a three-part kind of thing. So we'll do another one of these in around probably November or December talking about what we think will actually be nominated. This is more of just fun, but what will actually be nominated for the Oscars um, because then by them, we've already seen First Man, Star is Born, um, yeah. Bohemian Rhapsody, and then there will be other films that we won't see until January. But then we can actually make our legit pos- predictions. And then in February, or whenever they announce the nominations, we'll do another podcast discussing each and every category in detail, except the categories, I'm sorry, that we just don't know much about, like short yeah. documentaries. I mean, there's yeah. nothing wrong with them, but we <laughs> don't know much about them. And but- that'll be that'll be really interesting because the third part of this will actually be up while we're getting ready to do the second Sweet Film Awards. So that's oh, going to yeah. be, I mean, that's going to be interesting to because we'll be able to do some compare contrast with what we're doing with the sweet film awards and what we're doing with the oscars and yeah this is going to be a whole lot of fun and i can't wait to get started first off cody Uh, how are you doing today i have not asked you this in a while so how are you doing you know we just go straight in yeah no i was gonna ask you that uh life is good life is fantastic um getting my first vacation that i've had it in a long time from work taking a little break from youtube so i can rest up because it's been like four months of seven videos a week just non-stop and i need a little mental break but you know it's fantastic and i mean honestly my week has just kind of been average besides the fact that i'm excited for future plans and future projects and all that other good stuff but how are you doing zach i'm tired as fuck (laughs) <laughs> i'll just leave it there i'm tired but i'm ready to talk up. about this yeah because i literally woke up 20 minutes ago and for anyone i'm not even joking it's 7 20 a.m where i'm filming right now and where is it what time is it where you're at yeah it's 10 20 here in maine see my point exactly um but guys yep. this is <laughs> i also want to do mention cody have you ever seen the killing of a sacred deer Yes, I, I, I've seen it a couple of times. It was, didn't make it into my top 10 films of last year, but I, 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 I really thought it was a good I movie. I seen it last year because I finally watched it for the first time two nights ago and I had nightmares. Like that film is disturbing. Is and it hereditary it, level disturbing? No, no, not hereditary. It was just, the reason I nightmares is because it's just so messed up. I loved Killing of a Sacred Deer. I think it's a horror horror thriller masterpiece i I, no literally i like i'm not gonna do a review for it so i'll just do it on here yeah fuck it it's our podcast (laughs) um i don't really want to go into spoilers with it because i think it's a film that it's better not to know anything about but yeah i feel like the tone and feeling of that movie is the shining it's like a modern day shining 100 percent. the score the um eeriness um, I mean, that whole, that ending is like, it. it's just, there's so much to dissect about that film. And um, I love The Lobster, and I love Beartooth. If you've never seen Beartooth by the guy, it's like, just as insane. But I think this is his best film to date, just for the fact of, like, I think his wooden dialogue and how he gets people to be so wooden fit the tone of his film. But it's just, man, dude, there's always something off with that film since the mo- second it opened and did you know that you know that when they're doing surgery in the beginning that's an actual heart surgery going on yeah 
That's disgusting. <laughs> that is yeah. fucking gross. <laughs> no, you're right. And honestly, I remember I'm, I didn't think it the way you did when I first saw Killing of a Sacred Deer, but I remember you posting on Twitter the other night that Killing of a Sacred Deer is like a modern day Shining. The more I think about the film, yeah, it, it completely and utterly is. Do I think, I mean, everybody knows that you and I both really enjoyed Hereditary, and I still think Hereditary as an overall film is better, but Killing of a Sacred Deer is yeah the movie is it's great in in one of the most disturbing things i've seen since this year with hereditary it's yeah it's no, good i agree it's I excellent agree. it's right up there it's still a full it's weird though because it's not like a full horror film like it is and it isn't it's more of a drama but i guess same with hereditary hereditary is kind of the same way so I, I don't know, but maybe we'll both mention Hereditary as we're talking about our films. So, yep. Cody, let's get into it. I want you to tell me your first, your 10 best picture nominations. Okay. And so what, for, any honorable mentions you would have had. Okay, so for, so for honorable mentions, well, actually, no, I guess I'll include it. I don't actually have any honorable mentions, which just a disclaimer for you guys. I haven't seen as many films as Zach has seen. And so I'm only listing the films for all the nominations we're talking about here with the films that I have seen. So the nine films that I, the 10 films rather, I do have on my best picture list is number one is Black Klansman, without a doubt. Two is Sorry to Bother You. Three is Leave No Trace. Four is eighth grade. Five is Mission Impossible Fallout because the way I see it, you know, it's like we've all been saying if Mad Max Fury Road can get a nomination for Best Picture, there's no reason that Mission Impossible Fallout shouldn't. Next is A Quiet Place, Hereditary, Tully, Annihilation, and last is Sicario Day of the Soldado. Okay, solid. The, there's some in there that I didn't pick either. Um, so I'll do mine now. Um, mine is Leave No Trace, Won't You Be My Neighbor, The Wife, which is a film that I've been like praising. Like if, if you the wife comes out this weekend, like go to a theater near you. First Reformed, Black Klansman, Mission Impossible Fallout, Eighth Grade, Hereditary, A Quiet Place, You Were Really Never Here. And my two honorable mentions would be Black Panther and The Little Stranger. And wow, I almost, okay. and I will say, I almost put Avengers in there because of the fact of how much that film has like put together. But I think overall, like when looking at Black Panther and Avengers, Black Panther is a better structured film than Avengers yeah. was. Because just from story wise, but so yeah. Um, but overall, like, was there anything on my list that like you thought was weird? Because I, I, I almost put sorry to bother you too, but the ending, I I can't. I I can't with that ending. Yeah, no, I completely understand. And just as a reminder, guys, the way we're doing these lists is if the Oscars were coming out tomorrow as our predictions, essentially. But I put sorry to bother you because honestly, I understand the ending is the ending is just bizarre and strangely weird. And I know personally I didn't like it, but generally when it comes to the Oscars, I find that they tend to they tend to steer more towards with what the critics are saying and Sorry to bother you. Still has like a ninety-seven percent on Rotten Tomatoes Which or something like that. How do ninety-seven people like? It's just crazy to me. Yeah, yeah. I I really just I don't get it either. The ending is just super bizarre and out there and weird. It's just it's just over the top. And for me personally, it's like I said. The more I actually thought about the the third act of the movie, I hate it. it it's the yeah. thing that bogs the movie down for me because it's just not necessary. No, but but other than that, I mean, I can I can you, agree. You with don't your, like horse your, penis, right? No, I don't like horse penis, and that was a running gag in the movie that just did not work for me. I thought I, it was hilarious. I just like this isn't what the film was going for. It was like completely no. out of left field. You want a film that is a better version of Sorry to Bother You? I think that both I think that Black Klansman and Get Out did that message that Sorry to Bother You was doing a lot better. I I will agree that they did them better, 
but I'll say I probably enjoyed Sorry to Bother You more than Black Klansman. Okay, well, even I can though agree I really liked that. Black Klansman, I I felt like the ending for that one did the same thing. It deteriorated yeah. what it was going for. And now some people don't have an issue with that, which I totally understand. Like I just, as a personal person who watches film, I hate when they do stuff like what they did in the back the back end of Black Klansman. I didn't think it was needed at all. So, um, but for me. Out of my list, the one I think would win, like if the Oscars are tomorrow, hands down would either be Black Klansman or A Quiet Place. What about you? I have to agree with you on that one. I I really do have to agree with you. I think Mission Impossible would be, you could probably make an argument for Mission Impossible too. Yeah. But the reason I say Black Klansman, as of right now, everyone is talking about Black Klansman. Everyone. And same with A Quiet Place. Everyone was talking about A Quiet Place at that point in time. So, I mean, eighth grade would probably be a good container, but Leave No Trace is such a small film. Like, it's not even going to get looked at yeah. this year, which sucks. Uh, you yeah. Really Never Here is the same thing. Um, First Reformed, same thing. The Wife, same thing. Um, even though I have a prediction The Wife will be that one film this year that no one fucking saw, but it still gets nominated. There's always yeah. that one film each year, and I think uh, Glenn Close will at least be nominated this year, but that's for a mm. different discussion at a different time. Yeah. You know, honestly, it is for a different discussion at a different time. And I don't think it's just the wife. I also think. Leave No Trace is also going to be one of those movies like The Wife, where it's a mm -hmm. fantastic movie that should be nominated for Best Picture, which Leave No Trace completely should. It, it's not going I'll, to be. I'll be shocked. Like, I really hope the studio pushes more on Leave No Trace this year out of any film because that film was wonderful. It was wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. It unfortunately, is. though, it, it it's like with our last pos uh, podcast, you, me, and Jay, we all agreed that the fact we all loved Leave No Trace, it's just nobody's talking about it. Yeah, no one is, even though it has like 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> yeah, so, so all the film whatever. lovers saw it and nobody else did. Did the film lovers really see it though? Did the film lovers really see it? Because I good... would I would make an argument that a majority of even film lovers have not seen this film. You know, that's actually a really good point because oh film lovers at one point or another, I am sure, have said they've seen a movie when they actually haven't to yeah, try to fit in. <laughs> but uh real fast, let's get into our next category, and that is for best actor. Best actor, man. Do you want to start okay. with this one? Yeah, and for this one, like I said, going off of the fact that I'm only going off of films that I have seen, I only have three, and it's Ben Foster for Leave No Trace, John D uh, John David Washington for Black Klansman, and John Krasinski for A Quiet Place. Good choices. I almost had John Krasinski in there. Um, I do have John David Washington, which I he's really good. He's so good in Black Clans, and he is like he probably really the is. most. Him and Adam Driver are probably the best parts. Um, discretion though, I do not have Ben Foster in actor. I have him in supporting, but there could be an argument for either one. So I put him in supporting, yeah. but there could be an argument for either one. Um, so my I'm surprised you didn't put Ian McGregor for Christopher Robin. Well, I thought he was great, but as far as the Oscars are concerned, do I think he would be What's Oscar your list? material? So you can do whatever you want. Dude, dude, I'm fine. I'll put it down right now. You are fine. I'll put you and McGregor just to make my list four instead of three. What about there Josh we Brolin? Go. What about Josh Brolin for Thanos? He's a... Uh... Oh, look, I understand that these are a list, but I'm going off of the fact I'm trying to treat this as Oscar okay. type as I can. Okay, so my mine. Well, dude, it's it's if the Oscars are tomorrow, so I'm going with the whatever's best. You know what I mean? Like okay. That's all I did. Yeah, that's but you Jack... have fun. Uh, that's actually a really good point. So, okay, put Josh Brolin in for best actor, too. So, wait, so I do not have Josh Brolin in. I have John David Washington for Black yes. Klansman. Let me say it like how they do in the Oscars. Joaquin Phoenix for You Were Really Never Here. Ethan Hawke for First Reformed. And they're going to show a little scene of him. Logan Marshall Green for Upgrade. It was good. It was really good. Evan Peters for American Animals. Never saw it. Never saw it. And no, I'm ashamed I'm that I didn't I'm sorry see you it. Sorry, never saw it. But those tickets were fucking $20 and we were not going to get $20. <laughs> Even the infants. You know, it's on VOD right now, though, right? It's, it just went on VOD. It is? Yeah. So you can watch okay, it. Okay. I'm going to have to check it out. Honorable mention. Check it out. Ian McGregor. 
McGregor. Ewan McGregor. Why the fuck do I sound like a boss baby right now? Ian McGregor. McGregor. My name's Ian McGregor. All right, so to be honest, out of all these, my personal pick would be Walking Phoenix because the guy gave two fantastic performances this year, and you were really never here, and don't worry, he won't get too far on foot. What about you? Who would you give it to? Um, as far as as far as the ones that I've got, I would I would give the performance to to Ben Foster above yes. every other person I had on my list. But like I said, I haven't seen First Reformed or he was never really there, so I can't really speak to those. Although I do want to check them out. Unfortunately, they didn't come out in my area. <laughs> which I'm is so, a oh, First Reformed comes out on I think First Reformed's on VOD too. I got a lot of catching up to do. That's what I've learned yeah, here I'm today. Pretty sure, I'm pretty sure First Reformed is either on BOD because it's coming out on Blu-ray in like two mm-hmm. weeks. Or it might be coming out today. I'm not sure. But I'm like pretty sure that like First Reformed's out there now. That like it's easier to find. Okay. Well, as far as... Yeah. So that that's my win. And honestly, I can't argue with that. Joaquin Phoenix, literally every performance the guy has done is masterful. He is he a is master. He is one of the best ever. I mean, as, as far as someone who goes method and everything, honestly, he reminds me of just a slight variation of a uh, Daniel Day-Lewis type of an actor. That's kind of what Joaquin Phoenix reminds me of because his caliber of actor, it, the way he does things, it's right up there with Daniel Day-Lewis as far as I'm concerned. He's Oh, yeah, he's he, so he transforms. The guy transforms. That's why I'm so excited to see him as the Joker. Um I'm hoping, though, with the Joker film, I hope they don't go in this predictable route where he's not the Joker in the film yet, and then at the end, it's like, then he turns into the Joker. Because I think it would have been a better twist if we didn't know it was a Joker film. You know what I mean? Yeah, honestly, I hope they... I hope they go into the route where you're saying he is the Joker, but it's... You know, it's more along the lines of if we get a story where... It, our point of view is not from the Joker, but our point of view as an audience member is someone who goes along with the Joker, like a taxi driver or one of his. Well, I think he or... will be. I think he will be the Joker. I, I I think it'll be from his point of view, but I'm okay. curious if it's like before, during, or after. Like that. That's because like Zazie Beats is playing his wife in it, and that's where okay. I'm kind of. Um, and Robert De Niro is rumored to actually be in the Joker film too. So I think he is now. I think it's confirmed which, that he is. Actually, honestly, that is the biggest surprise to me, and it it's actually one of the things that gives not for me. Movie. Robert De Niro doesn't do shit this year, dude. He fucking he, sucks. Have you seen the last like five? He did Dirty Grandpa. No. Just saying, he did Dirty Grandpa saying okay even if robert de niro doesn't do anything for you i'm just saying that robert de niro in his past was a phenomenal actor oh, and yeah. that's the interesting thing for me because even with all the stuff that he's done i never in a million years the guy who was in the godfather the guy that was also in taxi driver the guy that was in silver Lang's playbook i never thought robert de niro would be one of those actors who would get on board to do a comic book movie i never thought he would i think be that's that what guy. everyone said about robert redford too when he did winter soldier yeah and it uh, i mean it's it's crazy and yeah. but i mean it's Cody, insane do you want to tell me about your best actresses yes i certainly will so for best actresses for me right now it's tony collette for hereditary charlie Theron for tully emily blunt for a quiet place natalie portman for annihilation and then jennifer lawrence for for red sparrow okay i have glenn close for the wife who in my opinion would win this award charlie Theron for tully Thomas and Mackenzie for actress. I, I I put her as top. I thought she was the main character, but I mean, oh, we'll have flip, that. Con- could, we'll have. I mean, that you can flip flop it. You know what I mean? You can flip flop it. <laughs> yeah. Tony Collette true. and Jennifer Lawrence. Now I want to give my honorable mentions. Okay. Emily Go Blunt, Lily James for Mamma Mia too. And the last one, I want everyone to listen to this because this is seriously okay. one of the best performances of the year. Okay. I don't think the movie's that good, 
but her performance in it was fant was fantastic. And I really do mean this. Her performance was fantastic. And this is a hard performance to do. Amy Schumer for I Feel Pretty. Never saw the movie, so I can't speak to it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, I'm just, like, saying, like, seriously, like, if anyone, like, disgraces that performance, like, she takes a really hard role to do. And she does a body shaming thing where, like, she, it's literally shaming her own body herself. And she tackles that and tackles it. That's hard as any actress to do. So I, I think she would deserve a nomination. I don't think like the performance was the best thing ever, but I think that like she goes in a different route. So I kind of like that. And she still did her own shtick, but uh, Glenn Close or uh, Tony Collette would be my pick. Yeah, out of the list of people I've got, it would be Tony Collette. Tony okay. and I, I haven't seen the wife, so I can't speak to Glenn Close's performance. I, I'm sure it's ph phenomenal. But Tony Collette, what she was a able to do in hereditary i mean everybody even now you know even though we're doing this podcast about the oscars being tomorrow the fact of the matter is everybody it, even if people across the board don't really enjoy hereditary everybody agrees that tony collette should be in talks for the oscars next year still after what it's been almost Which sucks. Three i don't think she will i don't think she'll get nominated yeah, which it, it's awful, but Tony Collette, she was great. And I mean, this year she gave two, she's given two really good performances as well. Just like Joaquin Phoenix, she gave a great performance in Hearts Beat Loud. And then she gave, a, I forgot she was in that. Yeah. Very different yeah, performances, and, even though the film was very cliche. I liked Heartbeat yeah, Loud. Yeah. But then she, she was the best part of Hereditary, which is important because she is the main, she gives the main performance in Hereditary. Okay. But yeah, but yeah, across the board, Emily Blunt, phenomenal in A Quiet Place, Charlize Theron, Tully, Tully, the third act was okay, but across the board, once again, Charlize Theron is what makes that movie. Same thing she with that. so much weight for that role, which I love yeah. when actors like go that route. It's true. And then Jennifer Lawrence in Red Sparrow. Honestly, I'm kind of glad that Jennifer Lawrence is getting away from the whole superhero X-Men genre, all of that stuff, because the performances she's given between Mother last year and Red Sparrow uh, in this year are two of my favorite performances that she's ever done. I still think her best performance is Silver Linings Playbook. I don't think anything oh, will ever beat that. I completely forgot about that. Yeah, she was Says the one who just on fucking that. talked about it. Yeah, I know. I talk about Robert De Niro and Silver Lines Playbook, and I completely... No, I think that's her best performance do. today. I still think that's her best performance today. That film is so... It's. I, I think that film is so great. I love, it I is. love that movie. But uh, Cody, supporting actor. Go ahead and say it. Okay, best supporting actor for me, it goes... Uh, I have two from Black Klansmen, actually. One is Adam Driver. And, oh, and, you have. Okay. and the other one is Jasper Pakonin. He is a Finnish actor. And you remember the, the main really obnoxiously, pretty much a modern day oh. version of Michael Fossbender in Black Klansman. That guy. Oh, that's yeah. a good choice. I thought you were going to do um, David Duke. I thought you were going to do his character. I, I thought you were going to do um, for Grace. Yeah. Yeah, no, I like Topher Grace, but for me... One of the performances that overly made the movie for me, because if you're going to portray the these racist Ku Klux Klan organization members as civilized and all that, you need to have a wild card in there. And Jasper Perconin as as this really over the top backwoods redneck racist hippie. His performance was scary. Like I said, it reminded me of of what Michael fossbender did in 12 years a slave except yeah, in modern you. day he was really he was really good in there and okay. then uh next three is uh it's either nat or nate wolf for hereditary why D bruh why dude come on you fucking fake cry no no this take the cry out of it no i i <laughs> thought he was okay his stares and stuff like he was good at times but i didn't like i thought he was a good I don't know. Like I'm, I'm very torn on his performance because I think there was some excellent parts and there were some really 
moments that didn't work. Uh, okay, you know what? Fine. You know, I'll, I'll replace him and I'll have three for Black Lantern because this is actually, you brought up the fact of one thing I wanted to do anyways, which is Topher Grace as David Duke. <laughs> He's really good in it. He's really good uh, in it. Okay, next up for me is Josh Brolin in Sicario Day of the okay. Soldado. I, I thought he was phenomenal in there. And then last for me is Joel Egerton in Red Sparrow. Oh, yeah. I forgot he was in there. Yeah, That's dude. Good one. So let me reiterate. Adam Driver, Jasper Pakonin, Topher Grace for Black Klansman, and then Josh Brolin for Sicario 2 and Joel Egerton for Red Sparrow. But surprised what you, is surprised you didn't mention one that I'm about to say. Okay, I'm probably gonna scream like I do at all these other lists. But so, go for it. I, so I did put Ben Foster. We already know this. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Adam Driver, Jonah Hill for "Don't Worry, He Won't Get Far on Foot." It's his best performance he's ever done. Jonathan Price from The Wife, and last but not least, Michael B. Jordan for Black Panther. Easily one of the best performances of this year. I would hands down say that the fact that the guy made me actually root for his character in a sense, even though he is a villain. I had to put him up there. I, I think he, because if any other actor was in that role, that role would have been mediocre. And I mean that and not wrong the script, but I just, there wasn't enough to the character. That's the truth. There, You don't see a lot of him as much as I would have thought there should have been more of him. So, Michael hey. Jordan. Okay, Michael B. Jordan. Well, you certainly have a great list there. Once again, he won't get too far on foot. Didn't come out in my area, so I wasn't able to see it. I didn't but... come out in anyone's fucking area. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, honestly, okay. So I don't get far on foot. Honestly, out of the ones that I have on my okay. list, it's hard for me to say who would actually win. But I, I put it between. <sighs> I think Adam Driver. I, yeah, I put it between Adam Driver and Jasper Paconin for their performances is like I said, number one, Conan is an extremely rare talent. I mean, as far as I know, everything he's done beforehand has been all Finnish and foreign films, that kind of stuff. And this is his first really big uh, American film, first American film, as far as I'm aware. And he blew it out of the water, he was phenomenal. So it'd either be between Adam Driver or, yeah, Jasper Pakonin. Who would you have win on your list? Um, I'd probably have... I mean, I'd probably pick Ben Foster, but yeah. that's kind of a debate. So if I'm not sure on that one, I, 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 I think Jonah Hill. Like, even though the movie was okay, the performances are so fucking good in there that he, like, rised above it. Okay. So, okay. but let's move on to supporting actress. Do you want to say yours? Uh, yeah. And first up, my number one, we already said that you could probably flip flop these because of the movie, but my best supporting actress, number one is Thomas and Mackenzie. That, that's the first one. And she okay. was, she was, I don't think anybody's going to argue that she was great as far as one of her first performances she's ever done. Then uh, next up is. Next up is Millie Shapiro in Hereditary. Ooh, ew, ew. <laughs> I can just hear the I... noise coming out of my fucking ear right now. <laughs> she was, she was great. And then next up is, oh, let's see here. What else did I have? Lapita Nyong'o, uh, Lapita Nyong'o for Black Panther. Okay, so you put fucking her, but you don't put fucking Michael B. <laughs> Jordan. Are you fucking kidding me? Dude, your fucking list <laughs> sucks, man. <laughs> Dude, you suck. Okay, you suck. let's see here. Okay, then next up after Let me that, guess. Wait, wait, wait. Let me guess your next one. It's okay. the fucking trash can that was right behind Mr. Incredible when he threw something else at the... Dude, right? what are you talking about? I'm saying that you're nominating a, probably a trash can next, right? No. Oh, jeez. Elastigirl, then. Dude, shut up. No, it's it's not hot. What did stop it? Okay. First, I just got to... Let's see here. It's... Let me see if I can pronounce this right. Millicent 
Simmons. Holy crap, did I not? Just say what I... it's from. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm trying to remember. I don't think I wrote it down. Millicent, give me one sec. My... I hate you. <laughs> Dude. Just go on with the other ones and then look it up while I do mine. Okay, well, that's it. Those are my three. Okay, so let me do mine while he's looking up his. Because I'm an unprofessional. Mackenzie David from Tully. Tessa Thompson, sorry to bother you. Laura Hare from Black Klansman. Amanda Seyfried, First Reformed. And my love, Rachel McAdams for Game Night. And <gasps> that's who she is. What's she from? A Quiet Place. <laughs> okay, so that's who he picked. Um, if I were to pick from my list, though, I would probably give it to either Mackenzie David for Tully or... I'd probably say Rachel McAdams for Game Night. I think she was so good in Game Night. I think that's like a Melissa McCarthy type of nomination. Yeah, no. Rachel Mc Game Night. Let's just talk about Game Night because Game Night is the game best night comedy is... in the last since I mean last year's Girls Trip. Yeah, no. It's great. It's it's crazy how good because not people weren't expecting much out of Game Night and it came out and people loved it when they first saw it. And then as time has gone on, people keep saying how much they love it more and more and more and more, you and me included. But yeah, honestly, for the, miss, the list that I have, yeah, it's no doubt. McK Thomas and McKenzie should be the, on my list is the one who should win. Her performance, yeah. in, her performance in Leave No Trace, like I said, she's young. Number two, this is one of her. This is one of her bigger performances that she's given, and honestly, for me, this is the best work that she has ever done. Oh yeah, hands down. She she's excellent. She's excellent in that it role. And if she would have been in mine, because like I said, I put her as best actress. Um, yeah, I, I would put her to win too. Um, I think Laura Heather. I can never say her name right. She's from Black Klansman too. I think she's the one yeah. to look out to. She was fantastic. She's one of the best parts. She got it. It's cool to see like her and Spider-Man Homecoming and then pop up yeah. in there and like how much of a different role she can portray. So I, I, I mean, that's why I really put her in there is because I didn't even see her. Like I had to no. look up who the damn actress was and where she was from. <laughs> that's, that's the good talent right there where you can't, where you don't pick them out as an actress. You pick them out as their character. So yeah, but let's that's move true. on to director. Um, I'm going to go first with this one. Okay. So Christopher McQuarrie, John Krasinski, Ari Oster, Deborah Granick, and Lenny Ramsey. Now Lenny Ramsey did um You Were Really Never Here and Deborah Granick did um Leave No Trace. And now my honorable mention would be the Russo brothers. Nice, nice. So what about okay. you? So mine is uh Christopher McQuarrie for Mission Impossible Fallout, Bo Burnham for eighth grade. Yep, that's a good one. John Krasinski, obviously for Quiet Place, Deborah Grinick, uh Granick for Leave No Trace, and Ari Aster for Hereditary. Okay, pretty so, solid. So I think if you would have seen, I think if you would have seen, you were really never here, which is also on VOD now. Um, you would like it. <laughs> okay, so yeah, this is actually the list so far that have the most similarities on it. I think the only difference I think this is the here, most actual list that would happen. Yeah, honestly, I do too. I mean, it's crazy. It's it's insane. But yeah. So. So. This is so. Who do you think would win? Honestly, out of all of these, I think Krasinski. Yeah, that it more than likely it would be. If on an if actual I, level, Krasinski would probably win. On if I'm hoping Granick because it leaves no trace. Or McQuarrie. Honestly, yeah. When it comes down to it, though, uh, for my list, if I was going to pick somebody to win, it would be between it would be between Krasinski and and Aster, because honestly, I I never really got the whole uh, dumb, uh, looking down on genre films like horror films and stuff, because honestly, Ari Aster is a rising talent and 
obvious i'm not exactly sure if they're actually going to include it in the actual oscars but i think hereditary and ari aster deserve to be in the talks for it because what he was able to do with hereditary is insane well with the most popular awards maybe it'll get nominated uh you, you, you know what the most popular award can bite me okay that's a stupid award it's a cute award yeah you know what well they <clears throat> cody it, says fuck Cody says fuck. No. Cody says fuck. Let's move on to the best screenplay, fuck. shall we? Cody says fuck. 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 All right, what's your screenplay? I'm going to take my marker and draw all over the mic now. <laughs> or camera. Yeah, so for best screenplay, I have Black Klansman, 8th Grade, Hereditary, Isle of Dogs, and Tully. Okay, pretty straight. Uh, I put The Wife, Little Stranger, Black Klansman, Sorry to Bother You, and First Reformed as mine. Okay, nice. So who would be your winner? Oh, The winner out of all of these, I would have to say probably Isle, uh, Isle of Dogs. Okay. Uh, I, almost, I, I almost had it in there. I mean, I, I really... If it wasn't Isle of Dogs, it would probably be Black Klansman because Black Klansman... If we're going to talk about films that aren't animated in any way, then Black Klansman by far has the best screenplay of this entire year so far. Yeah, in my I agree opinion. with you. Uh, that one or First Reformed for me would probably win for yeah. best screenplay. But Isle of Dogs, there's just there's something that Wes Anderson and his team do with their scripts that is just so phenomenal. It's it's great. Uh, yeah, it's great and. Isle of Dogs instead of l like the Fantastic Mr. Fox, it was, it was a PG thirteen film that was a lot more mature than it had any right to be, and it was, I mean, it was just I really, mean, really, really well done. I didn't know how mature it was gonna be until I saw the damn dog rip the other dog's ear off. That's when I was like, okay, now this isn't that much of an animated film for kids. <laughs> yep, like nope. Fantastic Mr. Fox is an animated film for everyone. Yeah, Isle of Dogs is more for adults, and I really like Isle of Dogs. It's weird that it's not in my top ten though. Like I was so looking forward to that film. I think I need to revisit it again because I only saw it once. So yeah, no, it, it's interesting because Isle of Dogs, I love it. I I gave it my highest rating, but it's not. Wait, was it in my top ten? I don't know. Right no, it now, wasn't. It, when we did it, it wasn't. No. But it, there's a reason for that. And the fact of the matter is, I loved Isle of Dogs, but it's just not a movie that I want to go rewatch and watch over and over and over I think again. the problem with that film is it's too long. Yeah. It, I, think it is. I think 10 minutes could have been cut out of that movie, and it would have been a better made film. Well, even yeah. if it wouldn't have been better made, I think it just would have helped the pacing, because I think that's the reason I don't want to rewatch it so much, is because it's, like, Fantastic Mr. Fox, I rewatch, like, every few months, because I love that film. But it's not as long. Maybe it is. I don't know. It doesn't feel as long. But, yeah, yeah so. That brings into question, you know, this is something that we didn't actually bring up. We know we love The Incredibles, too. But Incredibles between 2, the, between Island Dog and Incredibles 2. But, no, 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 not how much you love it. I mean, I love Incredibles 2 more than Isle of Dogs as well. What I'm saying is, though, as far as the winner for best animated film, what's going to win? I mean, and, uh, Hotel Transylvania 3 would fucking win. <laughs> between Isle of Dogs, Incredibles 2, yes, and Hotel, Hotel Transylvania, Transylvania 3 would win. What makes you think that? Did you see it? Yes, dude. It was adorable. Yeah, it was adorable. The dance sequence at the end deserves an Oscar nomination. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, between Incredibles and uh, Isle of Dogs, I'd probably say Incredibles. I'd yeah. still think Incredibles. My thing with... Is because as much as like... like I, I like Wes Anderson's films. Some of them I love. I don't like them all. I don't know how big of a Wes Anderson fan you are, but for me, I don't like his films are very entertaining, but like the only two that I actually think are like Oscar caliber, like per, like greatness is Grand Budapest Hotel, which is hands down his best film and Fantastic Mr. Fox. Those are the only two I think that are actually like Oscar caliber stuff. Isle of Dogs is good and it will be nominated for Best Animated Picture this year. 
hopefully I, I mean if it's not there's something wrong but my thing with it is it's good but like incredibles 2 was great yeah i'm not so, going to i'm not going to disagree with you there it was it was and i really think more great. people probably saw incredibles 2 than Isle of dogs yeah, that's true. But when did the Oscars ever listen to the people? Oh, wait, when they made the executive decision that they thought the most popular film of the year would be a good award. I'm ne- I- I'm seriously never going to get over that. That, in my opinion, was just about the stupidest thing they could have ever done. Wait, what was that? Sorry, you cut out for a second. Oh, I'm sorry. I said them making... Them making the most popular film of the year award, that has got to be about the stupidest decision they have ever made. I hate the fact that they I think did it's that. I think it's stupid, and that's like another video for another time, and I know Griffin from Man vs. Movie wants to rant about it. Uh, yeah. I'll leave it here. I have to see what the perimeters around it are. I, I have to see that first. Like, I, I still think it's dumb, but I have to see what the perimeter around it is. Like, is it money? Is it this? Is it that? I... Because for me, it's like, if anyone's just going to vote like, oh, what was the most popular film of this year? Why wouldn't you just put it up for Best Picture, too? Yeah. You know I mean? so it, it doesn't make sense to me. So, no, I don't know. But let's move on to our last category, and that is cinematography. Do you want to say your names? Yeah, sure. So, cinematography, number one is Black Panther. Okay. Number, number two is Mission Impossible Fallout. Three is Avengers Infinity War. Four is A Quiet Place, and then five is Solo, A Star Wars Story. Oh, dude, Solo is beautiful. I wish I would have put that one. Damn, I wish I would have put that one. Uh, my cinematography... Now, I, I'm not going to review this film. I'm, I'm not. I, I thought it was fine. I just I don't really want to review it. And that's Alpha. I think Alpha is gorgeous. One okay. of the best looking films ever. So if you were going to... G- Holy crap, why didn't I even think of that? Dude, that film was gorgeous. That film yeah, was it was. Gorgeous. It was. Okay. So I didn't right think it was like like I thought the film was good. Um, I just didn't love it. All right, undisclosed right now without <laughs> what would you get it for a letter grade? Um B minus C plus. All right, there you go. You just reviewed it. We're all happy, everybody. Yeah, right. yeah, I went and saw it. Like I was like, I had like two hours to kill, so I just went and saw it, and I was like, oh yeah, pretty nice. Not nothing special, but I think the cinematography is special for that film. I, I, I mean, seriously, that cinematography is gorgeous. Yeah, um, dude, the Griffin, wife would be my next one. Oh yeah, the Griffin loved that film. Yeah, he did. It's, I mean, I, I mean, I guess I can understand why he would enjoy it. Me, I found it kind of. I, I think I hated the trailer boring. so much, so I literally could not care less to have seen that film. Yeah, no, same here. I mean, honestly, I I generally don't like to go into movies with huge expectations because I found with my personal experience that destroys the experience for me. But I will say that Alpha... My biggest problem with it is, I, even though it was an hour and a half long, it was just so boring to me. That was really my biggest problem with it. Like everything else I thought was fine. Um, My next one would be The Wife, Leave No Trace, Hereditary, and A Quiet Place would be best cinematography. And I I think Quiet Place is slept on when it talks about cinematography. When the red lights turn on, that scene is like... It's gorgeous. Yeah, it's it's insanely great. Um, But yeah, so that's our Oscar nominations. If the Oscars were tomorrow... um, these will change a ton by November. Hands down, will be all changed. Like, yeah, <laughs> that's just yeah, the truth. Like, no. almost all these nominations will be changed by, like, November or December. I mean, let's just look at the films that we got coming in October. Two months away. There's what? First, no, wait. First Man doesn't come out, but... Yeah, it might. It might. Because it's okay. rumored to be getting an early IMAX release. Okay, but we also know that... Um, Bad Times at the El Royale is coming out in October. That wa- See, and it won't be Oscar potential. I think the script will be. I, I don't think the film will be, though. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out, because we talked about it on, on this Star podcast. Star Wars comes out in October. It comes out the same week as um, Venom. Yep, that's but true. That's, it's probably limited, so it means the next week, but it's still October. Yeah, true. Um, yeah, 
And, and then we know, of course, that October through through December is just going to be all Oscar bait type stuff. Oh, and Somewhat, guess what? Yeah. Oh, what? and guess what? Mary Poppins Returns. There's a certain actress in Mary Poppins Returns. You want to know nominated... something? What? I'm not excited for that movie. Uh, I'm I'm excited for it only because I'm I think a Mary... I, need, I think I need to see a legit trailer, though. Yeah, true. I mean, we've only had like two teasers up till this point. But let's see here. The Old Man, the Gun. That comes out in September. Yeah, that's true. That is very, very true. That movie looks really good. That movie looks really freaking good. Uh, the Star is Born um, in October. Mm -hmm. First Man in October. Beautiful Boy in October. Um, that week's going to be... Dude, so the week that uh, Bad Times at the El Roy come out is First Man and Beautiful Boy also. Really? Yeah. Wow. Mid nineties. Dude, do not count Jonah Hill out. His directorial dude, that kid is so good in um Killing of a Sacred Deer. I cannot wait to see mid nineties. Or mid eight. Yeah, yeah mid nineties. Um let's It'll be honest, be... the Johnny English Strikes Again film will probably be nominated. Yeah, more than likely. Um the, in the Four Realms. I, I've heard some good stuff from that. Yeah, I have too. It's Bohemian gonna be insane. Rhapsody, Suspiria. Wait, do those come out in October too? November. Gotcha. Girl in the Spider's Web. I finally saw the trailer for that, and man, that looks Dude. great. That looks really good. Yeah, it does. It looks phenomenal. And uh, Freddy Alvarez is the one helming it, and we and both Claire discussed. Foy, I'm a huge fan of Claire Foy now. I love. Yeah, Claire Foy. no, she's great. She she is great. And if you guys remember, Freddy Alvarez is the guy who gave us the updated version or the remake of The Evil Dead. Have and you seen he that? the the remake? Yeah. yeah. But you haven't yeah. seen Army of Darkness. No, dude, <laughs> you're not going to let me live that down until I no, watch I it, are you? Uh, the front. <laughs> yeah, I bought you them how many months ago and you still haven't watched them. Um, the front <laughs> runner, which no one's talking about, is Jason Reitman directing and stars Hugh Jackman. I'm going to go see it because it's Hugh Jackman. <laughs> I know. Widows looks really good with Steve McQueen. Yeah, dude. Creed 2. The Green Book looks great. I mean, there's so 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 many good films coming out mary queen of scots and, and that's with uh other ones that uh mary queen yeah Mar margot robbie and sorcerer ronan yeah oh th that is gonna i might just faint in my seat because those are two of my biggest hollywood crushes mm -hmm. right now and then i think the only one i didn't mention <laughs> was roma the uh alfonso, alfonso Carazon, which Carazon. uh <laughs> croissant croissant whatever croissant. Um, see, I, I like his directing um i didn't like gravity though so i'm curious to see how this one is because that was his last film so i did not like gravity at all i, I really? thought it was, yeah i thought it i thought it was fine i i didn't think it was like anything amazing and i saw it in imax i yeah the imax is beautiful but i just didn't do anything for me honestly okay so who knows? But guys, that's going to be the end of this sweet film podcast. Thank you guys so much for watching. So Cody, where can they find you at before we get going? All right, guys, as always, you guys can find me right here on YouTube, either on the sweet film podcast or just search Cody Curtis at the very top of the search bar should be the first name that pops up. You can also find me on Stardust, Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter by just searching either underscore Cody underscore Curtis or just Cody Curtis. And of course, guys, you know you can always find me co-hosting Entertainment Wars with my great friend right here. So Zach, tell them where they can find you besides on your YouTube channel, which is right here. Other than here, you can probably find me at Sandwich Sean Films. You can also find me on Twitter at Pope the King. And you can find me here antagonizing Cody to say fuck. <laughs> every single but week. guys let us know what your nominations would be comment down below and tell us what your guys's nominations would be if the oscars were tomorrow who do you think would win who would be nominated let's talk about it down below in the comments thank you guys so much for watching this you guys are seriously all the best we do appreciate all the love and support that you guys give us this so can't wait to do another sweet film podcast soon and until next time you guys all stay classy <laughs>